History has validated conclusively the vision of those in 1918 who foresaw the strategic potential of air power and drove the creation of the Royal Air Force. Today, the RAF remains at the forefront of the defence of our nation, not least in the face of an assertive and aggressive Russian threat to us, our allies and the international rules-based system. In the last year, our Typhoon fighters have been scrambled 42 times to intercept potentially hostile aircraft, keeping our skies safe. The ability to control the air and increasingly space remains the RAF's most important function. Dominance in the air has been a baseline assumption in our joint military endeavour over the last three decades. But our control of the air is now being challenged, as we have seen with the Russians in Syria and through other state-based threats. As others seek rapidly to match or even surpass our current technological edge, we must modernise our capabilities in air, space and cyberspace. We need look back no further than the Falklands conflict to recall what determined air opposition can do to our air, naval and land forces when air superiority is not achieved. The RAF's ability to react quickly and decisively over enormous distances makes us a potent lever of national power worldwide. We are currently deployed on 13 operations in 21 countries across five continents, engaging, developing, understanding, deterring, protecting British interests and striking those who seek to harm us, also promoting prosperity with over 80% of defence exports coming from the aerospace sector. The flexibility and adaptability of our people and our capabilities means that we can carry out many roles simultaneously and switch quickly between them. As we did last autumn, when within 24 hours, we delivered life-saving relief in the wake of Hurricane Irma. The biggest military deployment, Sam, that we've seen uh, since Libya. Uh, you've now got a thousand troops in the area. Whilst at the same time, helping destroy Daesh during the Battle of Mosul. The RAF is busier than it's been for generations, and the fight against Daesh is our most sustained high-intensity operation since the Second World War. Even when that fight is won, our commitment to a volatile region will endure. After all, our Tornado Force has been continuously deployed overseas on live operations for the last 28 years. To deal with all these challenges, the RAF needs to grow the next generation Air Force, such as with our new P-8 Poseidon Maritime Patrol aircraft, additional Typhoon squadrons, and aircraft like the F-35 Lightning. We need the resources, money and people to make all this happen while still driving modernisation and efficiency. The RAF will respond to the challenge. We've always been a thinking, modern, forward-looking service, eager and able to adapt and innovate. We will continue working very closely with the Royal Navy and the Army, the services from which we were formed a century ago. We are working exceptionally closely with the Royal Navy to do recover the UK's carrier strike capability with the famous 617 Danbuster Squadron bringing its F-35 Lightnings back to the UK in the summer, with flying trials on board HMS Queen Elizabeth starting later this year. RAF 100 gives us a unique opportunity to commemorate our past and celebrate our successes today. But it offers much more than that. We can use RAF 100 to inspire young people and to connect with all parts of British society, for we have a great story to tell. Lord Trenchard, the first Chief of the Air Staff, said, We open widely, and to all. That principle of on merit alone continues to be our very essence today, and we successfully recruit outstanding men and women with high aspiration and great potential. So we aim through RAF 100 to reach out to up to two million young people, inspiring them through our example and a series of educational programmes, apprenticeships and scholarships, especially in STEM subjects inspiring them towards technology and innovation, not just in the RAF, but across the UK. The superb men and women who serve today are the proud inheritors of the legacy of our first 100 years. We now look forward with pride and confidence to inspiring the generations who will take us through our next 100 years. The sky's never been the limit for our people. As our motto, Per Arjo Ad Astra, confirms, they are reaching for the stars.